Most of you guys already know me, for those of you who are new, I'm Dave. Uh, I've been a member of MIFAS for about two years now, working on my third. And I've been really serious about astronomy for those couple of years, and I've really taken to sketching all of my observations and dumping a bunch of sketches on the NEFAS website. And so I've kind of earned myself a bit of a reputation and was asked to come in and talk about uh, some of the sketching that I did. There's my sketch, by the way, of Jupiter and a shadow transit that occurred on Jupiter. One of a series of sketches I made of that transit. Uh, here are some more examples of some of my. Uh, can you guys see these already? You know what? Turn yeah, the ones that say over. Yeah. That's good. Oh, there you yeah. go. There we are. Ooh, nice. That is Remember, good. astronomy is a, is, is a dark thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so here's a couple of examples of my sketches. A couple more there for you. All right, so uh, when I was asked to talk about sketching, I figured there's two ways to do it. I could talk about sketching, <laughs> like why, why sketch, or uh, I could talk about sketching and, and how I actually go about doing it. And so I decided to do both. Uh, so the first question, the most obvious question is why sketch? Why bother sketching your observations at the telescope? Right? Why make this? Hold on. When you can make that. Uh, by the way, that image, uh, courtesy of Sam Fisher, he gave me permission to use that. <laughs> so in the age of DSLR cameras, why bother with pencil and paper and sketching? Well, the first thing is it's inexpensive to get into. Uh, those of you guys who do astronomical sketching, you know what the cameras and all that equipment costs. Um, this is what you need to sketch. <laughs> Uh, try not to go broke. Uh, <laughs> this expensive gear. Uh, another reason to sketch is it's part of a proud tradition in astronomy. So here I have uh, a sketch from Galileo's notebook. Right, so a lot of the great astronomers in history sketch their observations. So you're proud of a, uh, part of a time-honored tradition that you sketch. I was not able to get Galileo's permission <laughs> to use it, so don't anybody tell me. All right. Uh, but mainly, you should already be logging your observations. So if you don't do photography, if you do visual astronomy, eye to eyepiece astronomy, you should really be logging your observations. They say if you didn't log it, you didn't observe it. And I believe that. Uh, if you take the time to log your observations, you see more, you can record it, you can go for some of the astronomical leagues observing programs. And a sketch is going to enhance the logs you're already, you already should be taking, really. And the act of sketching will train your powers of observation. Uh, so if you take time with an object and you sit there for a while and you sketch it and you look for details to sketch, it will train you to be a better observer. It's already made me a much better observer than when I first started sketching. Uh, the sketch can help you confirm your observations after the fact because you have an image of it. And I'll actually be coming back to that point a little later on. Uh, I would say that an image captures the object itself in beautiful detail, like you guys saw. But a sketch is capturing your impression of the object, of what you actually saw at the eyepiece. So when I'm talking about astronomy to people who don't do it, and they want to know what they can see, I can show them one of my sketches and say, this is exactly what it looks like. This is exactly what you would see. And if you're artistically inclined, this is just one more way to, to incorporate that into your hobby and, and get that much more enjoyment out of it. All right, let's get to the fun part, talking about sketching. All right, so uh, some things to keep in mind. One, when you're doing astronomical sketching, the scientific value of your sketch is more important than its artistic value. So you want to make sure you're taking your time and being as accurate as possible with the placement of stars, the proportions of things. Look for details to sketch. This is how it's going to train you to be a better observer, as you're looking for things, looking for more that you can sketch. But don't sketch anything you don't see. Right? So even if you know that there's supposed to be a dust lane there, if you don't see it, don't sketch it. But do sketch everything you see. So even if there's something that's not the object you're going for, or a meteor goes through, or anything like that, go ahead and put it in your sketch. Right? If you saw it, if it stood out to you, sketch it. Ultimately, uh, at least with the way I do it, you're sketching a negative. 
So when you're sketching the object, just bear in mind that the darker you make something, the brighter it represents the object. All right, uh, I was kind of joking before about the pencil thing, and here's the actual tools in my trade. Uh, this is my pencil case. So I've got two different pencils. Uh, one of them is HB, that's just like your number two, and then the other one is 6B, which is really dark and soft. For a while, I'm going to bring out the brighter areas. I've got my two kinds of eraser. Uh, this one's good for just you know, regular erasing. This one is actually tacky, you can lift up a little bit of graphite for fine control. And then the blending stumps which are really useful, and I'll talk about those later. <coughs> uh, here's my clipboard, sketching journal, and my headlamp that you can see I put a little red tape on there. Uh, you need some kind of a light source, and you need to have your hands free. You can get one of those reading lights that clips on and put red tape on that, or a red bulb. I like to use the one that comes off my head and tips down, either way. Uh, you want to use red lights so you're not impairing your night vision, and when you're shining it on <coughs> white paper, it's really going to be brighter, so you want to tone it down. I add tape to mine. And an observing chair, which even if you don't sketch, this, this thing is awesome. To, to be able to sit comfortably at the eyepiece, it's like getting another inch of aperture. It really is. All right, so here's how I do it. The first thing I do is I look for some kind of an easy object I can put in the middle of the frame, usually uh, just a star, a bright star. Even if the object I'm looking for is over here someplace, I'll center the star so that as it drifts, I can come back to the exact same position over and over again. So I have this centered up as a frame of reference, and then when I start filling other things in, it's going to be in relation to that. And that's just a dot. Let's draw a dot. All right. Then I start looking for other stars that are easy to place. So one trick is to imagine a clock face around the outside of the edge and look for stars near the edge that are near those clock positions. So I got one over there by three, six, and nine. And these were particularly bright, easy to find near the edge. Uh, you can also look for things that are halfway to the edge or because <coughs> you can easily judge that with your eye. And then you're going to use those to find others. So these lines are just to show how I use geometric relationships to find and accurately place more and more stars. So for example, this star is two thirds of the way towards half, and down a little bit, right? This one's about halfway between these two, and then you could find this box shape. You wanna look for geometric shapes like squares and triangles, right? Got a triangle there and a triangle there. You'd be surprised how accurately you could recreate a triangle just by looking at it. And you're just going to keep on filling in more, uh, more of the star field until you feel like you've done enough. I do want to emphasize that you want to take your time and do the field. I would say that when I do my sketches, I probably spend 80 to 90% of my time sketching the star field and about 10 to 20 on the actual object itself. But it's very important you have an accurate star field to give the object context. So why is it so important to sketch the field stars accurately? I want to take a second and talk about this. There's the story of these two sketches. So some of the guys who were here tonight were with me when I made these. Uh, we're out there in the, uh, our observing location, the swamp. And I was looking for one of the triplets in Leo, not the one near the back end of Leo, but the one near his belly. And I wasn't sure which three of these galaxies, because this galaxy, by the way, is the same as this one. It's just two different orientations. But I wasn't sure which three out of these five were the three I was looking for. So I sketched everything, and I made sure to take time and put all the stars where they go, represent their brightness by making the brighter ones bigger than the, than the dimmer ones. And then when I got home, I pulled up this image, which is the same ones I was going for. Right? This is the same ones, but done by someone with much better equipment than me. <coughs> And then here you see I was actually able, using my sketch, to locate the same stars. So these three, right, are these three bright ones here, this little rectangular kind of thingy is this. And I was able to figure out exactly which ones were which, and I realized this is actually this galaxy over here, which is one of the NGCs. And so because I took my time with the star field, I was able to find those same stars and positively identify my sketch. All right, um, once we put in the star field, we want to add in the object itself. 
uh, if it's an extended object, like a globular cluster or a nebula or a, a galaxy, something that's fuzzy, uh, what I'll do is I'll take my pencil and I'll scribble next to my circle so I get a patch of graphite. And then I take one of those blending stumps and I rub it in the graphite and then I rub in the object. And I use the existing stars again to triangulate its position and put it where it should go. All right. Then what I'll do is I'll darken in the brighter regions. And again, in this example, you see I actually took out my darker pencil for that. Started making it progressively darker towards the middle because the object was progressively brighter towards the middle. Right? Because remember, we're making a negative. Uh, then I add finishing touches, so that depends on the object. So this one was a globular cluster. I was able to pick out some of the individual stars. I was able to resolve some individual stars. So I just sort of took my pencil and da 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 Added those in. There's too many to try to find where every one of them goes. Uh, here is my sketch of M31, uh, the, the Andromeda Galaxy. And for this one, I did notice a dust lane. So I just took my eraser. I just erase a little graphite here, right, to make it lighter in the sketch so it's darker in the object. Uh, once you finish your finishing touches, you're going to get your orientation and notes. Uh, so this is where that center star comes in handy again. I put that center star in the middle. I start filling out my notes, which I don't have any here because I actually just recreated a drawing for this. Uh, but then as I'm taking my notes, I check up on it every so often, and eventually that star is going to leave the field if your motor is off or if you don't use a motorized telescope. And wherever it leaves, that direction is west. So that lets you mark where west is on your drawing. And then if you want to find north, you either go 90 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on how many mirrors your telescope has. I never bother, so I forget which is which. <laughs> but you can look it up. And so you have your sketch oriented and your notes, and that's it. That's you're done with your sketch at the observing location. So the next step is scanning the image into the computer and inverting it, which is what you do later. And now you can see why we sketch it like a negative. So it comes out with a brighter region near the middle, or with this dust lane coming through uh, M31 like that. So get out there and start sketching. And uh, still, still couldn't get Galileo's permission for this. So, <laughs> this um, uh, last thing, here's a couple of resources. Um, a lot of the stuff I'm explaining about sketching I got from PerezMedia.net, also called uh, Belts of Venus, I think. It's either Belts of Venus or Clouds of Venus. I'll have to look it up later. Uh, and the log I use, that's from Home Builds Astronomy, but you can use anything with a circle on it, really. Uh, let's see here. Do we have time for Q&A? Oh, yeah. Cool. Anyone got any questions? Yes? How long did it take you to do the sketch? Do you mean how long does, uh, does a particular sketch take? Yeah, the time period from initial sketching to you, you the finished project. About a half an hour. You just spent about a half an hour on a sketch. Uh, a little bit of time locating the object, some time taking notes. But overall, it's about a half hour per sketch. Sometimes a little longer if it's a particularly dense cluster and I want to really do it right. Anyone else? All right, well thank you yeah. for coming out. Yeah. Oh, Raj, you did have a question. Yeah. Um, I've heard that one of the things that can help you uh, in, to uh, tune up your drawing is to practice by drawing an egg because you put an egg down it's got a shade one size brighter than the other and such like that and if you make the egg look three-dimensional in your sketch then your your drawings of the sky will be better too oh but roger what if you can't draw a stick egg <laughs> <laughs> I guess I need to start sketching eggs. Yeah. Then you fail art. That's right. <laughs> I did. <laughs> All right. Does anyone else have any questions? Yes. Susan? It might be a good time to talk about what you guys are doing after the meeting tonight. Yeah. So, like I was saying, um, I plan on making more sketches tonight. We're going to head out to our dark site, our dark uh, sky location. We call it the swamp. It's out in the Osceola State Forest. Uh, 
any one of us could uh, help give you directions on how to get out there. And uh, if you want to come join us, you're welcome to join. Uh, you could follow, I'm going to head home afterwards, but you might be able to follow one of these guys. And uh, it's always a good time out there. Nice and dark. If you haven't been out there, you owe it to yourself to go and see what a dark sky looks like. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. However, there's no facilities out there. There is. There's trees all over. The well, there's no <laughs> facilities for some people. There's every tree you could possibly want. And we do observe light discipline. So if you do come out, just be courteous about not having the bright lights on, using only red light, that kind of thing. Yes? So how long did it take you to be feel confident in your sketches? Uh, I've been sketching about a year now. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. yeah, if you guys look at my sketch log there, you can see the dates of like when the first one was up till now. Did you, and did you <coughs> were, like your first ones were, was it a lot of trial and error? And yeah, a little bit. One thing I did, and this sounds a little silly, but I went online and I found and printed out some sketches. And then I cut it and I put it in the bottom of a coffee cup because it would be like the eyepiece. And I just oh. tried it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But then my head was blocking all the light and I couldn't see down my coffee <laughs> cup. So then I just put it on the table and, and tried it. And just I tried to recreate the sketch until I figured I was kind of in the ballpark. Like I said, this guy's better than me. His sketches look fantastic. But uh, tried to use some of his techniques. So yes. Are you, are you doing any moon sketches? I haven't yet, I plan to. Uh, I haven't really, I mostly do deep deep sky. I've done a couple planets and I haven't done the moon yet, but I definitely want to. And I'm sorry, you actually, you had your hand raised as well. Uh, what kind of object should a beginning sketcher attempt? I would say the deep sky objects, because it's all dots and smudges. <laughs> really, uh, open clusters are really good, like if you want to go out for the Pleiades or the Beehive cluster or M41. And just start practicing putting the dots where they go and, and being as accurate as you can. And then globular clusters and galaxies and nebulae are all just other kinds of smudges. You should also label those things, no matter if you think it's a finished product or not, make sure you label it so you know, six months from now you can come back and see your progression. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Especially when I make a sketch that has two objects in it or three objects, I'll write next to each one what it was. Uh, otherwise, I label the sketch as a whole at the top. But yeah, you should definitely mark what it is you're sketching. What kind of equipment, besides pencils, <laughs> do you use? Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, my, my telescope is a 10-inch Dobsonian. Um, I like to do deep sky stuff, so I don't tend to go very high in power. And then, uh, to help me sketch, of course, a chair with adjustable height uh, is key, so I can sit comfortably and, and take a half hour, 45 minutes on the sketch. Um, the headlamp is very important, of course. And then here, again, I was saying the biggest <coughs> things, pencils for my dots, blending stumps for my smudges. And then you literally just scribble on a paper, paper and you take one of these and rub it in that graphite and paint with graphite to get the fuzzy bits in there. Yes? One, one thing I just wanted to point out is your method of spotting the stars, your reference stars, and using that to check back. That actually works in reverse because I was doing that in my head rather than on paper, but when I was doing the binocular messiers, I was looking for the shapes, etc., seeing what was around the, the object I was chasing versus what was on the chart until I knew I had a match. Yeah, absolutely. It goes in the direction. When you're looking at your chart and you see that there's a little, you know, string of stars there, a little whatever, and looking for that to confirm the observation in the other direction also also works. Yeah. When you're doing your, your stick uh, <coughs> connection between the stars there, like you had the drawing. Like yeah. this? Now, are you doing that on the, what you're going to sketch, or are you doing an overlay like a... Oh, this was, this was <coughs> to make it so that you guys could see it. This, is, this happens in my head. Okay. So right, so uh, I know where this star is. I've, I've already marked this star. Yeah, right, that's I find this one near 1030, and I know this is halfway. Okay. So I just kind of gauge visually halfway, and I mark it. Mm -hmm. I, I put these lines in the presentation 
to try and visually represent what the process is, but really you're just eyeballing, right? And you're, you're, you know this is a rectangle with that fourth star, so you kind of can eyeball where you put it. The other thing I kind of forgot to mention is as you're progressing with the stars, and you're getting to about this step, you'll want to go back and maybe make some of the brighter ones a little big, bigger and adjust them. So you see these bright ones are nice and big, and then these little dots are, are representing dimmer stars. And that one either was something on the paper or a particularly dim star. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe a bit of uh, maybe a bit of pencil lead or something. I'm not sure. That was a mosquito. That's what it was. Yeah. It's too small. <laughs> I always love finding equilateral triangles because every it's the same length, same length. Those are really easy to do when you find an equilateral triangle. All right, well, I guess that's it. Thank you guys Good so job. much.